So what is good, YouTube? Uh, so today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to just answer one question. One question that I get asked at least, at least 10 times a day. At least. Um, so first I need you to go ahead and subscribe. Hit that like button. Turn on your notifications. But we're going to get right into it. Main question or one of the main questions. I know there's a couple. Uh, one of the main questions I get is, why am I not in the WNBA? Now, I get it. I understand. Like, um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain it. I'm gonna explain why I'm not in the WNBA. But first, let me take y'all back. So when I was a kid, I started playing basketball when I was about like four years old. So my entire life, when I was about 12, 13 years old, I saw the movie Love and Basketball. If y'all haven't seen it, I don't know what you're doing. Like, I feel like everybody's seen the movie Love and Basketball, even if you like basketball or not. Do you like love? I don't know. It's on Netflix. So Netflix sponsored me. Um, but I saw the movie Love and Basketball. And at the end, Monica, the main character, she wants to go play professionally in Europe. She played in Spain. And she won the championship over there. And I don't know. And when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to be like Monica. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go play in Europe. I'm going to go play in Spain. And I want to travel. Like, at a kid, I said this. Like, I was like, I'm going to travel. I never once said or thought that I wanted to play in the WNBA. I did, however, say that I was going to be the first girl in the NBA. It didn't happen. I don't think it'll ever happen. Um, but that's what I said at a young age. So, fast forward. Um, I don't know if, I mean on Google. Some of y'all may or not know this, but I did, however, play professionally. I played three years in Spain. I played in the Czech Republic. And I played in Mexico. Here, real quick, I'm about to show y'all I'm about to show y'all a little sneak peek of my pro days in either Mexico or Spain. Y'all go watch and check it out. Don't don't go nowhere. I'm telling you. I'm nice. I'm nice. I'm telling you. Go watch it. And like like Monica played in Spain. That's that was like I like checked that off my bucket list because that's what I wanted to do since I was a kid. So while I was in Czech Republic, I was there for some time playing there. I did fine. Spain, I averaged about 16 points a game. When I got to Mexico, I averaged about 24 points a game. So do I think I could play in the WNBA? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, and I'll explain more why I chose or have chose not to. Um, so after I played professionally in Europe and Mexico, I had to have a knee surgery. So I've actually had... My knees are ashy, y'all. I would show y'all my scar, but... These things are... Here, we'll sneak peek. Boop! See that ACL? Boop! So I've actually had two ACL surgeries. But once I got back... Um, from Mexico, I had to have a third knee surgery. And while I was, you know, rehabbing or whatever, one day I decided to post a video of me dribbling on Facebook. This is like, I was late to social media, y'all. Like, I didn't have an Instagram and 
until 2016, I think, or 17, 16, I didn't have an Instagram. Um, so I didn't have an Instagram then. So I posted a video of me dribbling on Facebook, just, why not, just to keep up with my progress. And the video, like, blew up, went viral. And the Globe Charter saw it. A recruiter from the Globe Charter saw it, invited me to try out. And at the time, I was like, no, I'm too competitive. You know, I'm still, like, competitive mode, like, bop, bop, bump. Like, I'm serious about it still. Granted, you know, I have this knee, knee injury, but I knew I would be able to come back. Um, but it was kind of like a once-in-a-life opportunity for me. You know, the company's been around for 94 years now. I would be the 15th woman in 94 years to ever play for the Globe Trotters, and I love traveling again. So I talked to my family about it, and they were like, you know, why not? It's an amazing opportunity. Why not try it out? You can always go back and play. So I did. I tried out for the Globe Trotters. I made the team, became the 15th woman in 94 years, all that. Traveled the world. Um, which was cool. I was grateful for the opportunity, and... <laughs> It was like, I started to also post more on my social media. I created an Instagram. I, well, I created an Instagram, but I actually started being more focused on it um, or just consistent on it. Like, I, I'm trying to be like one of those people who are not on their phone all the time and on Instagram and social media all the time because it's just... It's overwhelming. Like, I have a maximum freaking alert alarm on my phone that tells me when you reach the time, basically. But, so, social media started to grow, 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 grow. <clears throat> and it allowed me to build my own brand, build my own platform, um, reach out to many more people, meet people, meet new people. Um, and basically, it just gave me another source of income and allowed me to, you know, grow my brand. So, that's where we are now. And do I think about ever wanting to be in the WNBA? I think it would be cool to say, um, I do. Just be like, hey, yeah, I played in the WNBA. Um, but at the time, like, the WNBA players are friends in the WNBA. like. When I was growing up, I played against Skylar Diggins. I played against Elena Deladon. Um, who was? I mean, plenty, plenty, plenty of players in the WNBA that are popular, popular players. Um, I played with and against them. So, you know, I, I definitely respect them, and I know what they did to get there, the hard work they did to get there, and I also know that, you know. To be honest, like they, the WNBA doesn't make or didn't make that much money. And I'm not all about money, but you know, you put in all this work, all this time, all this effort, and some of them are only making teacher salary. And I mean, it doesn't make sense, but it does make sense. Like, I get it from both sides. I get it from the business standpoint, which you have to. You have to f be able to fill in, fill those seats in, to get money. I get that. So if you see empty gyms or, you know, not big crowds, then obviously you're not bringing in a lot of money. But so something has to change. Something had to change, and I understood that. Another business side to it is, you know. People are like, the WNBA isn't entertaining. There's layups, there's no dunking. Um, so I've heard people make suggestions, lower the rim. I've heard people make the suggestions, make the jersey different. Like take off, take off shirts or wear sports bras and spandex. Um, my opinion on that is, I get, again, I have two sides to it. As an athlete, as a professional basketball player, as a basketball player 
you're telling me, you're telling these women who've been playing their entire lives probably, who've been shooting on 10-foot goals to have to change their shot to impress you. I get, I get um, the rims being lowered. There would be maybe more dunks more somebody get dunked on which would be crazy it would be dope but you're asking someone to change their shot from 10 10 feet to nine feet that's going to throw you off i mean as a shooter you've been shooting this way for how long and you're asking them to change their shot um but the business mind to me is like i mean if i'm going if i'm going to a game and i see who? Uh, Candace Parker come up. Somebody try to take a charge and yeet. Yeet. On their neck. On their head. Yeah. If I see that, I'm coming back for that. I'm paying for that. And I'm telling my friends, yo, you gotta come with me, bro. Um, but yeah, so there's two sides to that. Uh, and then there's, I, again, I told you, I, I heard people say, well, why don't they wear spandex? So get, get the men involved get the men to come to the game well i mean why does it always gotta be about the men get on my nerves bro wearing sports bras and spandex like who wants to do that like no not everybody got a six pack in a flat stomach in a booty big old booty doody doody I mean, not everybody wants to do it. Not everybody should have to do that. Uh, so, those are just some reasons, some other reasons. But it's tough. I just want to see the women, the, I just want to see the WNBA continue to move forward in the right direction, progress, the right pathway. But why did it take so long? It's 2020. The WNBA has been around since what? Siri. When did the WNBA start? The last WNBA That ain't what I asked. No, no, no. When did the WNBA... 1996. WNBA has been around since 1996. And it's just now getting some momentum. Why? Why? 